our unit is still home sweet home um, that we were working on before break. This is our last week for working on that unit. And our story today is how a house is built. And this is written and illustrated by Gail Gibbons. But before we get into the story, I wanted to talk to you about a foundation. And all homes have a foundation. The foundation is kind of the base of the building. It's the structure or it's where the structure is built. And the foundation may be on the ground or under the ground. It could be made of cement or rock or some other strong material. And the strength of the whole building depends on a solid foundation. So if the foundation isn't solid, the house won't last very long. And the bigger the house or the bigger the building, the bigger the foundation has to be. Now, our selection today is from the genre explanatory text. Now, an explanatory text is written to explain something. It gives information to tell how or to tell why. And it uses facts in that explanation. And, of course, these facts can be checked in other sources. It presents information in a clear sequence. That means a time order, remember, and that they happen in a certain order in time. And it might use diagrams, photographs, or other kind of illustrations to help the reader understand. So the essential question today is, what are the steps to build a house? And we will be using the comprehension strategy, asking and answering questions. And we'll also use um, some making connection um, comprehension strategy. Remember that when you ask and answer questions, readers help check their understanding. It helps them pay attention to what they're reading as they look for an answer. And if necessary, you can review questions like who, what, where, when, why, and how to help you think about what's happening in the story. Now, making connections helps a reader connect their own experience to what's happening in the um, text and the illustrations. All right, and you can also make a connection between two different stories or two different illustrations that are about the same topic. All right, so let's read How a House is Built. Many people live in houses. There are many kinds of houses. They are built with different materials. Houses are built in many shapes and sizes too. Now, this is a good time to make some connections because after reading this page, I make connections to some other stories we've read like Homes Around the World. And in that selection, we learned about the many different materials people use to build houses <clears throat> like grass, reeds, wood, mud, and bricks. So if we look at the illustrations on page 45 to make some connections to the photographs in Homes Around the World, um, you can see that We've got some houses made of mud here. We've got different kinds of roofs. We've got um, different shapes of houses, just like we did in that text. This is how a wood frame house is built. First, an architect draws plans. The architect re re recommends a general contractor who will be in charge of building the house. All right, so after reading the, this page 46 and looking at all the people in the illustration, I kind of have a question. Where is the architect and where's the general contractor? I can see like there's heavy equipment operators, carpenters, painters, <clears throat> but I don't see the uh, architect or the general contractor mentioned. And I kind of wonder, you know, why they weren't included in the illustration. Maybe if I read... I'll find out. During the months ahead, the general contractor will hire all these people to complete the, pro the project. Okay, so after I read page 47, I kind of answer my question there. The illustration shows all the people that report to the general contractor. That's why the architect and general contractor aren't shown here. The general contractor makes sure everything is done according to schedule. The heavy equipment operators come rumbling up the road. They dig a hole where the foundation will go. The foundation will support the weight of the house. All right, so I'm looking for ways to make connections between this text and my own experience. And after I read this page, I think about 
that low rumbling sound that I, I've heard before in trucks and construction zones. They, they make noise, right? They make lots of noise. And I've seen big equipment like those in the illustrations and they have loud, like a low sound when they move. Here comes the carpenter crew. Out come their tools. They bolt down boards called the sill to the top of the foundation. Then they hammer heavier boards called joists into place. So it's talking right now about all the different steps in laying that foundation. The carpenters nail sheets of plywood to the joists, making what is called a deck. It is the floor of the house. Next, they begin to frame the house. They study the architect's plans. They saw pieces of wood to their correct sizes. They nailed together an outside wall of the house. The carpenter crew pushes the wall up and nails it into place. All right, now this page, um, I have some questions here. After reading this part, who, who studies the architect's plans? I need to go back and I need to read that again. Next they begin to fill, next they begin to frame the house. They, now who are they? Oh, if I go back to the page before, I see that they are the carpenters. The carpenters are the people that work with wood. Another wall goes up and another. There are the carpenters, hard at work. Now the carpenters frame the roof. Roof rafters are nailed to the ridge board. Soon, the framing of the house will be complete. They begin to enclose the house by nailing sheets of plywood to the outside of the frame. This is called sheathing. All right, I've got more questions here. There's lots of questions because a lot of these things are brand new to me. So there's a lot of vocabulary in this part. And so I have a couple of questions. What are roof rafters? What are ridge boards? Hmm. I'm kind of looking, have to study the picture. And oh, I see this author has included a picture to help me understand. These are the roof rafters. And this that goes across the top is the ridge board. Okay, so that's why in an explanatory text, they often include pictures or diagrams to help us understand the information. Then they saw out the spaces for the windows and doors. Felt paper is nailed to the outside of the plywood. Next, the finished floors are nailed down. Windows and doors are trimmed. The painters paint the walls. For many months, this house has been a very busy place. At last, the work is done. Now the house is ready to become a home. All right, so here's a good place to make some connections. At the very end of the text, it says, now this house is ready to become a home. And this reminds me of the big idea of this whole unit that we've been talking about, what makes a house a home. So now we know the steps to building a house and we already have talked about all the things that make a house a home. So after reading this last sentence, I think I understand why they've decided to include this story in our unit because they're showing us how they build a home and we already know what makes a home. Now, before we're done, let's go back and just review one vocabulary word here. There it is. This is the word support. Support. To hold up. Annie can support her books. She holds them up. She keeps them from falling. Support. All right. Support means to hold up. So it says the foundation will support the weight of the house. So the foundation will hold up the weight of the house. That makes sense after what we talked about a foundation at the beginning. I will be in sure to include our um, discussion starters in your assignment so that you can talk about this with your big person.